Three of the arrows lodged themselves in the ground, while the other three pierced an arm, a leg, and a chest, just as Grant must have intended them to. Don was absolutely stunned by the sight because he'd never seen anything like it. As skilled as the knights had been, Grant seemed to be a full measure above them, and not just in strength or the ability to resist attacks. His technique was ambitious and daring, and he was doing things that would have been impossible for anyone else. However, as soon as Grant had thrown the arrows back, Antoine made another move. In just a moment, he'd pulled something from his pocket that Don had never seen before. It looked like a small black cylinder with a tiny protrusion on top, and in only a second, Antoine had run forward, removing a large bullwhip from his belt and pressing the protrusion on the cylinder down. Then he threw the cylinder into the air, and it sailed towards Grant. It was only then that Don realized what it was. It must have been a bomb. Don had never seen a bomb before. They were extremely uncommon in Graham, even during wartime, because humans didn't know how to make them. Apparently there was some kind of chemical inside that ignited when exposed to sufficient heat or something like that, but Don didn't understand it any more than anyone else in the Human Alliance did. The experts in Ali, the city of the mine, thought that they were close to understanding bombs, but even they couldn't be sure, and they certainly couldn't manufacture them. Every bomb in Graham was a relic, left over from the days when contact with the goblins of the Redwind Mountains had been more common. Don had heard a lot about goblins during his schooling, but he wasn't sure whether they were naturally smarter than humans or whether they just developed their technology differently for some reason. Bombs, though, were a very rare thing, whatever that reason was. It was no wonder, then, that Antoine clearly had reservations about using it. There was no way he could get it back once it was spent. However, as the bomb sailed through the air towards Grant, he seemed to be staring at it intently, and finally, when it was within a few feet of him, he lashed out with one hand, swatting it away. Antoine had clearly been expecting him to do that, though. In just a moment, his whip shot out, knocking the bomb back through the air towards Grant, who finally started to grin just a little. In a moment more, there was a deafening explosion, and Don was nearly thrown from his perch on the wall by the intensity of that blast. The explosion was even larger than Grant's entire body, but whether that would be enough to actually defeat him remained to be seen. No matter how powerful bombs were, the fact remained that Grant had never been beaten in single combat before, and there had to be a reason for that. Sure enough, in moments, the remnants of the explosion faded, and the smoke cleared. But Grant wasn't there anymore. he disappeared completely. Blast it! Antoine exclaimed, looking back and forth across the battlefield for several seconds, before one of the soldiers behind him looked up and gasped in shock. Soon, Antoine had done the same, but by then it was too late. With a crash, Grant had landed on the ground a mere foot to the left of Antoine, and he was still upright and still perfectly unharmed. By that point, Antoine had pulled out some knives, but he was still looking terrified, and Don had no difficulty understanding why. One by one, Grant was seeing through his enemy's attacks and responding to them with seemingly no difficulty at all. It didn't look as if Antoine had run out of techniques to use, but Don could tell that if Grant continued to adapt that well, they were all going to be in a lot of trouble. Quickly, Antoine started to back off again with incredible speed, moving his muscles as fast as he could and performing a technique which Don recognized instantly as Jera. Jarrah techniques weren't common outside of specific Jarrah training organizations, and most of the people capable of them became Jarrah masters, but in theory, Jarrah was a power that anyone could use. Don had learned a bit about it while he'd been going to school in Troma. Jarrah was a function of the body, a source of power which could be mastered and controlled. It was generated by three organs in the body and had three separate functions, controlling motion, energy, and the body itself. From those functions, a young, strong Jarrah master could move large objects, light fires, and heal grievous wounds using only the power of their Jarrah. Of course, like every function of the body, Jera became less cooperative when people grew older, and wasn't as strong in children either. Mastering it was also extremely difficult. Don hadn't learned any Jera techniques, of course, but it seemed that Antoine had, integrating it into his own fighting style, because in just a moment, he'd forced both of his hands in Grant's direction, and energy of a specific type was vanishing all around him. Don was still over a dozen yards from the battlefield, but he could already feel the heat disappearing from where he was. However, at the very moment when Antoine was unleashing his attack and freezing cold started to emerge from his hands, Grant had moved with stunning speed again, slipping around behind him. In only a second, his shadow had fallen over the fighting master, and the chainmail that Antoine was wearing gave an uncomfortable lurch forward, as though something enormously powerful had been forced through his torso. Something in Antoine's back had obviously been injured, but that, Don could tell, was only half the problem. As he watched the battle carefully, he could see that Antoine had finally lost hope. As arrogant as it might have been, he'd apparently been hoping to defeat Grant all by himself, but Grant had proven that his skill and technique were superior. For a moment, Antoine glanced over at Harold, scowling miserably, almost as though the whole situation was Harold's fault in some way, though Don suspected that his real feelings were a bit more complicated than that. Just as it seemed that Grant was about to finish Antoine off, though, Harold made one last move, and if anything, Antoine looked even less pleased when that happened. It seemed that Harold had a Jarrah technique too, 
although his was a technique of motion. Specifically, it apparently involved moving things up against the pull of gravity. It was hard to determine just how powerful Harold's technique was, but it was clearly equal to the task of lifting Grant right off his feet, because that was exactly what it had done a moment later. However, even as he was being lifted into the air, Grant's expression had changed. When he'd been fighting with Antoine, there'd been a slight smirk on his face, as if he'd actually been starting to enjoy it. But when Harold had lifted him into the air, that smirk had vanished, and Don could see that he was scowling again, just as he had before. That scowl worried Don, because from what he'd seen, it didn't signify that Grant was in danger, but rather that he was disappointed in the person he was fighting with. Oh, you poor pathetic idiots. Grant said in open disdain as Harold retrieved his sword and got closer to him again. This is why I said you weren't warriors. You've got all this power, but you'll never be able to win now. I think you're in for a surprise, Harold replied angrily, and for a few moments he seemed to be trying to use his Jera again for some other purpose. However, the more that Harold tried to use his powers to defeat Grant, the less effect they were having. His powers were definitely strong, but not strong enough to actually overpower Grant. All he could do was prevent the undead warrior from running away while he delivered his next attack. Worse yet, Harold's next attack wasn't much different from the last one he'd delivered. He swung his sword quickly and with both arms, but although his enemy was hanging in the air, it seemed that Grant was no less able to defend himself at that angle. He caught the sword between his hands several more times over the next few seconds before Harold started to back off again, as if trying to develop another plan. Pretty soon, Harold used his Jera to continue raising Grant higher and higher into the air, until he was well over a dozen yards directly up. Then, with one quick, sudden motion, he forced him back down again. Soon, Grant was plummeting towards the ground, still scowling in disappointment as he picked up speed. At last, however, when it seemed that he was just about to make contact with the earth, Grant lowered both hands, and once again there was a resounding crash. Don could barely believe it, but it looked as if Grant had cushioned his own fall slightly by using his arms and legs to distribute his weight more gradually, and then just letting his inhuman strength take care of the rest. It was terrifying, but it seemed that Harold's attack hadn't been enough to hurt Grant significantly. However, Grant had vanished before Harold could launch another attack like that, and in less than a second he'd reappeared behind the fighting master, slugging him hard in the back of his head. There was a sickening crack when that blow connected, and Don could tell that Harold was close to losing consciousness from that attack alone. But when a moment later he fell to the ground, and Grant brought his boot down hard on Harold's arm, the fighter's eyes opened wide again for just a moment, and his scream was nearly deafening. Up to that point, Don had been too busy watching the fight to think much about it, but apparently Antoine and Harold had both told their troops to hang back and stay out of the way at first. Maybe they'd been trying to minimize the loss of life in that battle, or maybe they really had thought that they could have beaten Grant without any help. But for whatever reason, it wasn't until that point in the fight when the armies of both fighting masters drew their weapons at once. For a moment, Don was sure that the armies would attack Grant together at that point, and somehow find a way to overpower him through sheer weight of numbers, but Grant seemed to have considered that possibility too, because as soon as the first weapon had been drawn from its sheath, Grant leapt into the air and towards the north gate of Arryn, where the army was gathered. Before any member of that army could even set one foot outside of town, the brutal undead fighter landed mere inches from the north gate and lashed out against its western support pole with his fists. In a moment, his bare hand had gone clean through the wood and stone, and the gate began to crumble. Quickly, Grant lifted the entire gate post into the air with both hands, pushing it sideways until it fell with a crash and an avalanche of rocks, barricading off the entire north gate and blocking the path of Arryn's army. Once again, Grant was alone with Harold and Antoine. Don couldn't tell how long it would take the army to break through that ruined gate or to go around it to one of the town's other gates, but he could tell that if Grant wanted to kill Antoine and Harold, he was going to get his chance. However, much to his surprise, Grant didn't even glance back at the two fighting masters who he'd just beaten so easily. Instead, he looked back towards the wall again, glaring hard at the place where Don was trying his best to hide from view. For most of the fight, Don had suspected that Grant could sense his presence somehow, but what was really worrying was that Grant seemed to be much more interested in Don than he had been Antoine, Harold, or their armies. A moment later, the massive fighter started shouting again, and his words chilled Don to the core. Enough of this! Grant barked towards the spot where Don had been just moments before. You're the one I want to face! Fight me, warrior! 